Now, a woman has been awarded £65,000 after winning a discrimination case against her former employers who failed to take her menopause symptoms seriously. Maxine Linsky left her job after being penalised and formally disciplined for underperforming. But a judge ruled the company failed to listen to her and acted in a discriminatory way. Well, joining us now is employment lawyer Joe Mackey. Thank you so much for joining us, Joe. Can you give us a little bit of background about this specific case? Yeah, great pleasure. Thank you for having me. So Mrs Linsky worked for Direct Line and um, she had severe symptoms of menopause. So <coughs> menopause affects, obviously, 50% of the population at some <laughs> point in their lives uh, and varies in intensity and how difficult the symptoms are. But for this particular woman, Mrs Linsky, she had um, brain fog, which many women report, but mm. she also had emotional dysregulation, which meant she was very upset very easily. Mm. She was It was almost like she was walking on eggshells. She was very tired uh, and she had lots of um, quite significant memory loss. And importantly in this case, she gave lots of medical evidence of those symptoms. So her GP sent medical evidence, a specialist, a neurologist sent evidence in, and an occupational health report all backed up those symptoms. And the problem really for direct line was that they didn't accept that this could at all amount to disability. And they were relatively disparaging of it and said in the end, something along the lines of, we've lost all patience with this woman. She's just not trying. We think this is all about her confidence and we do not believe this is a disability or it's capable of being a disability. And that's really why they've been stung so harshly, I think. Yes, absolutely. And I was looking back at the, at the employment, her employment, from 2016 to 2020. They said she performed, she had excellent work. And then after that, when her symptoms started, her work started to decline. Now, clearly, she had symptoms. She told them she had symptoms. Am I right in thinking, and this is, if this is right, this is appalling, that it was actually a female boss who said that she didn't believe her? That's correct, yes. Yeah, it was a female. Yeah, it was a woman who said that. Her manager, her line manager was a woman. And I think quite significantly, several of the women she worked with were um, of a similar view, which was a real shame. I mean, in this case, the judge was a woman, which was um, one thing that I suppose was positive that came out of it because the judge was having none of it. Uh, and and that was a, that's a good thing because clearly on the medical evidence in this case, menopause is capable or the symptoms of menopause are capable of being something arising from a disability, which, mm. which for, for an employer, that just means put in place reasonable adjustments. So while she's going through the symptoms, not forever, because she did great before she had the symptoms, give her a bit less targets. Give her some leeway on what time she gets to work because she's absolutely mm. exhausted. G mm. Give her some time out to go and speak to someone, a counsellor, if she's feeling really frazzled, because that happens. You know, it's the mm. same as you would have to do with someone who's going through cancer treatment or, or anything else that's in, in terms of being a disability. You just have to put in place reasonable adjustments. It's, creating a level playing field for people who, mm. for a period of time, aren't well. Yeah, it's quite easy, isn't it? It's simple when you put it like that. Um, can I just ask, so if she was discriminated against, well, there are three categories, I'm right in saying. It could have been against uh, on terms of, in terms of her age, um, in terms of her sex or gender, Definitely. and because of uh, a disability. Now, am I right in saying that it, in order to qualify for a disability, it would have to be longer than 12 months, which I presume most menopause cases would fall into that category? So that's the gist of it. So you're talking about the Equality Act, and the Equality Act has nine protected um, characteristics, which include age, race, sex, gender reassignment, and disability. In, as you've mentioned. So she claimed those three. She had age, sex and disability and she won on disability. Now, in terms of disability, there are only three um, conditions that automatically guarantee you to succeed in a claim and they are cancer, HIV and multiple sclerosis. The rest, you have to go to the tribunal and it's the tribunal judge and panel's decision weighing up the evidence whether or not this is in law a disability and that in law roughly speaking, is something that has an impact on your ability to carry out your day-to-day -day life and which lasts longer than about 12 months. And, and in this case, the symptoms had lasted longer than that time and mm. were having a significant impact on her ability to carry out her day-to-day -day life. Mm. And, and I see this very much from a medical perspective. Clearly, this lady was unwell. She needed some medical treatment. Obviously, things like HRT are incredibly useful. Actually, I'm delighted to say that more women are now taking HRT due to the changes in prescription charges. As a result, they can go on to something called a PPC. But also, surely, from the employer's point of view, what you want is a happy workforce. We need more older people in the workforce as well. And also, economically, surely it's better to retain staff than it is to actually train up new staff. 
you're absolutely right. We don't just need older people in the workforce. We've got older people in the workforce. So 51 or so percent of the working population is female. At some point in their life, they're going to go through menopause symptoms. We all are. I've done it. I mean, you know, it happens. And, and it's just something we don't talk about very much. As you pointed out, I think the thing that's most really alarming to me is that it's another woman who's given her so much mm. grief. I would kind of understand a little bit more if there was a male manager who said, I just can't talk about this, I feel really embarrassed, I can't, and didn't do a very good job of it. But for a woman to actually be on her case, and say, I don't believe you, there's nothing wrong with you, you're, you're a bit of a slacker, you're just not performing, which is, I think, the word she used, well, you are not performing, so you're not going to get the bonus that all your colleagues are getting because you're just not doing it, you're just not cutting the mustard. Mm. I think that's, yeah, that's really a it's real shame. And, and it doesn't reflect well on the on the... I suppose the culture of this particular employer and I, and I hope they're going to do something about it. It is disappointing, isn't it? I mean, I've not been through the menopause. I've not, dis I've not experienced this kind of discrimination. But years ago, I was discriminated against on the basis of my sex. And it was actually a female manager who did the same thing. It just goes to show, you know, even when women are put in positions of power, we still need to break down those patriarchal structures that mean that women the lower rung of uh, an employment, place of employment, are, are discriminated against. It's awful. But I was That's reading right. earlier today... That's right. Oh, sorry. I was reading earlier no, today... No, no, you're, you're quite right. I... <laughs> sorry, carry on. You carry on. Oh, you, yeah, no, you, you thank on. you. Right. I, I was reading earlier today all. that um, uh, we're seeing a, re a very low number um, of women actually citing menopause as a reason why they can't do their job. They prefer to say that, that they either have a disability or they're saying that they're feeling unwell and they're citing the symptoms but not actually specifically saying that it's the menopause that's causing their issues. Do, is that just we need to make a bit of a push in terms of awareness for women to, to actually know their rights when it comes to employment law and the menopause? I think that's a really good point. Um, you'll see there's been an increase in awareness and I think Davina McCall wrote a book about menopause recently and some more women, high-profile high women, um, have been speaking about it. Penny Lancaster, I think, talks about it quite openly. Mm. And that's something that we've seen and it's it's made changes. I think the issue um, in terms of employment law is there are these nine protected characteristics and the one that you're looking at is disability. So you do need to say it's a disability. That's mm. probably where it's, you know, it's, it's a legalese, jargony kind of thing, but you just need to get that, that legal definition right in order to put forward your mm. rights under the Equality Act. And... What's important in this case, and there's been another one like it, and that they're growing, the law is evolving in this, which is wonderful, is that it's now clear that there is some precedent to say, in these cases, the symptoms of menopause are a disability. They are capable of being a disability. And that's what I would urge any woman who's having a really hard time, mm -hmm. and it's related to menopause, and she's suffering at work as a result, just think about that. There's the potential for you to use mm -hmm. this and, and to say, quite honestly, this is what's happening to me. It's a physical change to me and it's making me unwell. And, and we mm. know that's a fact and it's, it happens. We just need to talk about it more openly. We certainly do. Very good advice indeed. Thank you very much indeed to you, Joe.